Michael. Don't live. This film is based on a true story. The events take place in 1585 when Spain was the most powerful empire in the world. King Philip had involved Europe in a holy war, with only England, ruled by the Protestant Queen Elizabeth, opposing him. Elizabeth's advisors are concerned that the Queen of Scotland Mary Stuart is claiming the throne of Great Britain. She has many supporters who are loyal to the Pope. Half the country's citizens who are Catholics also want Mary Stuart on the throne. However, Elizabeth refuses to punish her subjects for their religious beliefs as long as they do not commit any transgressions. Meanwhile, Mary Stuart is in her prison in England. She still has many servants and supporters who are confident that the citizens of Great Britain will soon rise up against the illegitimate Queen Elizabeth. Sir Francis Walsingham says that many courtiers are unhappy that their queen is still unmarried. Mary Stuart, unlike Elizabeth, already has a son, which gives her an advantage. However, Elizabeth has no intention of getting married. The queen and her entourage visited the church, asking the god for courage when the day of trials comes. At this time, King Philip expresses dissatisfaction with the actions of the English queen. He intends to build the greatest fleet in history and go to war with Great Britain. Despite the contradictory sentiments of the public, Elizabeth is not afraid to appear among the people. She received delegations from different countries, dealing with her routine royal duties. Through his envoys, the young Archduke of Austria, who is a cousin of Philip II of Spain, asked for Elizabeth's hand in marriage. She ordered to send for him. Sir Walter Raleigh also intends to have an audience with the Queen. He recently returned from the New World and is known for raiding Spanish ships. Now Sir Walter Raleigh is asking Elizabeth for permission to establish a colony with English laws on captured lands. He needs money for this. The pirate's proposal seems suspicious to Elizabeth. After the audience, Sir Walter was threatened by delegates from Spain, saying that their king does not intend to let his actions go unpunished. Meanwhile, Thomas Babington and Francis Throckmorton, with their accomplices, punished a Protestant informant for his betrayal. Thomas is confident that they must give Mary Stuart her rightful throne. At Sir Francis's house came his brother William, who had recently arrived from Paris. He spoke of the turmoil that was taking place in Europe. Lady Bess Throckmorton, the Queen's favorite maid of honor, helped her prepare for bed. Elizabeth was sad that wrinkles were appearing on her face with each passing day. Charles, a young husband candidate for Elizabeth, stuttered as he read her love poems. The Queen condescended to his attempts. They sat next to each other at the table. Elizabeth whispered to Lady Bess that Walter Raleigh had caught her interest. She instructed her maid of honor to speak with him. Walter told her about the plans to build his own city, which he would name after himself. The pirate also asked Lady Bess how he could win the Queen's favor. Say what you mean to say as plainly as possible. Speaking to Charles in his native language, Elizabeth told that he did not need to continue pretending that he enjoyed the company of English aristocrats. Later, Lady Bess confessed to Her Majesty that she found Walter Raleigh very interesting. Elizabeth shares her opinion and agrees to receive him for a private audience. Walter told the Queen about his travels on the ocean to the New World. His life was full of danger and adventure. Elizabeth loved listening to the pirate's stories. The only thing Walter wanted was money for a new expedition and to build his own city. However, Her Majesty did not rush to give him a positive answer. One day, the Queen went on a horseback ride with Walter Raleigh. She enjoyed spending time with him. However, not all courtiers, including Francis, found this acceptable. Meanwhile Thomas Babington, Francis Trockmorton, and other followers of Mary Stuart sent a message to their queen, awaiting her orders. The jailer does not leave Mary Stuart alone even during prayer. As she bathed, Elizabeth was sad. She realized that all the people at court, including Walter, valued her not as a person, but only for her titles and power. Communication with Bess was the only comfort for Her Majesty. At night, Bess secretly met with her cousin Francis Throckmorton, who begged her to speak on behalf of their family before the Queen. According to Francis, they were willing to accept a new faith and return to the court. However, Bess said it was impossible. Elizabeth spent more and more time in the company of Walter Raleigh. She was definitely drawn to this daring man. In the evening, someone knocked on Francis Throckmorton's door. He thought it was Bess returning, but the royal guards burst into his house and grabbed him. Elizabeth learned that a military campaign was being prepared against her country. Spanish delegates believed that the queen, who befriended a pirate, deserved it. For such an insult, Elizabeth expelled the delegation from her palace. 
She was not afraid of either Philip, his priests, or his army. Walter noticed that the queen was very upset about something. In an outburst of emotions, she shouted to the man that he was not her equal and would never be. Since the queen has learned of the impending campaign against her country, Philip intends to finish building his fleet within a month and crush the English army. The core astrologer told Elizabeth that a great war was coming in which one empire would fall and another would rise to the pedestal of greatness. At that time, Lady Bess came to Walter Raleigh's ship and told him that the queen wanted to see him. However, Walter intended to return to his previous free life because he had no place at the royal court. He immediately asked the queen for permission to leave, as he had nothing holding him here. However, Elizabeth had no intention of letting Walter go, appointing him as the commander of her personal guard. Walter was not at all pleased with this appointment. Barely containing his emotions, Elizabeth admitted that she was very afraid. War was coming, and Walter was needed here. Without saying a word, he left. Francis Throckmorton was publicly executed. Later, Walter disturbed Bess, who was praying alone. She was crying. Walter found out that her cousin had been executed today, and expressed his condolences. Bess feels guilty for refusing to help Francis during their last encounter. Walter reassures her that she wouldn't have been able to save her cousin anyway. Unable to contain their feelings, Bess and Walter share a kiss. The jailer prohibits Mary Stewart from sending letters, supposedly for her own safety. Bess and Walter are left alone and their passion ignites. Elizabeth continues to show attention to Walter, unaware of what has happened between him and her maid of honor. The queen confesses to Walter that she is tired of power. She decides to teach him aristocratic manners, ordering the dance with Bess. The young woman feels very uncomfortable, but is forced to obey the queen. Elizabeth suspects mutual affection between her maid of honor and Sir Walter. She now dreams of being in the place of the young and beautiful Bess. Meanwhile, Mary Stuart wrote a letter to her supporters, ordering them to act. William as it turned out was also on the side of the Catholics and planned to bring Mary to power. Francis begins to suspect that his brother is a traitor. Despite his sincere love for William, he intends to do what he must. Elizabeth and her entourage went to the church to pray. She had no idea that an assassination attempt was being prepared for her. Thomas Babington ran into the church and pointed a gun at Her Majesty. To the young man's surprise, she did not show any fear. Thomas's gun misfired, and he was caught. Soon the news reached Mary Stewart. She could not contain her emotions when she learned that the attempt on Elizabeth's life had failed. Now Mary will be tried for treason. Mary claimed that she had nothing to do with what happened. Then the jailer showed her the correspondence with the Catholics, which he had received from one of them. Understanding that she had been betrayed, Mary almost lost consciousness. Thomas is now in prison, as are all his accomplices. Francis asked the Jesuit why the gun was not loaded. He only smiled meaningfully. William wept in despair. The brother visited him and told him that he would secretly be taken to France the next day. From now on, the brothers will never see each other again. Worried Bess told Walter that the Queen wished to see him. According to the Maid of Honor, Her Majesty appeared very distressed. Upon entering the royal chambers, Walter found Elizabeth weeping. She was broken by Mary's betrayal. The Queen had intended to secure a lighter sentence for her cousin, but Francis said that now was not the time for mercy. Justice must prevail. At the trial, Mary said that God was her only judge. Philip of Spain learned that Mary Stuart was accused of treason. He asked his young daughter if she wanted to become Queen of England in the future. In the evening, Mary was informed that her execution would take place the following morning at 8 o'clock. Elizabeth still hadn't come to terms with this decision. In the morning, Mary Stuart climbed onto the scaffold, while her cousin did not know what to do. Mary's veil and upper dress were removed. The Queen of Scotland held herself with dignity in the last moments of her life and was ready to submit to her fate. Understanding that she was powerless to do anything, Elizabeth wept. For the last time, Mary looked at the throne and lowered her head. The executioner carried out the sentence. Philip intended to avenge Mary Stuart's death. He believed that the childless illegitimate Elizabeth should be immediately removed from the throne. The King of Spain called on the legions of Christ to go to war. Francis told the Queen that he had every reason to believe that Spain knew in advance that Mary's letters would be intercepted. Apparently Philip saw this as a good reason to declare a holy war on England and punish Elizabeth. With the blessing of the Pope, Philip led his fleet and headed straight for England. Elizabeth shared her dark thoughts with Walter. 
The queen wished that she had never known the love of a man in all her life, so she asked Walter to kiss her. For the queen it was the first and last time. The royal troops were preparing for defense. Before Walter left for war, Bess confessed to him that she was pregnant. Women of her social status were forbidden to have relationships with men without the queen's permission, so she intended to leave the court and go to her mother's house. At this time, Elizabeth was personally preparing the tactics for the upcoming battle. The Spanish army outnumbered them and had greater strength, so the lords advised the queen to prepare for the worst outcome. The Spanish armada sailed the ocean, making its way to England. Elizabeth was plagued by nightmares. Bess and Walter secretly got married. When the queen found out, she became furious and slapped her maid of honor. Francis tried to reason with her majesty, then she advised him to go to France to his traitorous brother. Elizabeth demanded that Bess reply whose child it was. The girl told the truth. Upon learning that Bess and Walter had married without royal consent, Elizabeth ordered to arrest the man. Unable to contain her emotions, she banished Bess, who betrayed her trust. Walter was brought to a cell. The queen turned to the astrologer for advice again, but he couldn't tell her anything concrete. Elizabeth is now more frightened than ever. The Spanish fleet appeared on the horizon. Elizabeth delivered a speech to the lords, saying they couldn't afford to lose. She ordered all prisoners to be released so that they could also fight. Elizabeth also granted Walter forgiveness. As an experienced sailor, he led the royal fleet into battle. The queen was informed that their troops had engaged the enemy. They had already lost two ships, but couldn't stop the Spanish Armada. Several more ships were sunk soon after. Walter gave orders, hoping to take the enemy with cunning rather than brute force. The infantry also prepared to enter the battle. Elizabeth was going to lead her troops personally and be in the thick of the fight. The soldiers were immediately inspired. A major battle began, with enormous losses on both sides. The battle raged on both land and sea. Due to a storm, the Spanish ships were forced to anchor. At Walter's command, the soldiers loaded the cannons with gunpowder and abandoned their ship. Seeing the approaching English fleet engulfed in flames, the Spaniards began feverishly raising anchors. Walter was ready to sacrifice part of his fleet to destroy the enemy. His plan worked. The Spanish army was defeated. Her Majesty in the meantime, spent her time alone. Philip said that Queen Elizabeth carries darkness, but he is light. Her Majesty took off her armor and went ashore barefoot in a shirt. In the distance, the enemy fleet was burning. Philip was informed that his army had been defeated. This is God's will. Elizabeth managed to defend the freedom of her country. Soon Francis fell ill. The Queen held her loyal advisor's hand and called him an old friend. Some time later, Elizabeth learned that Bess had given birth to a son and congratulated Walter, who had never built his own town in the New World. Seeing Bess with the baby in her arms, the Queen gave the boy her blessing. She had long forgiven her maid of honor and wished her happiness. The only thing Elizabeth regrets is that she was never destined to experience the joy of motherhood. Despite this, the Queen is proud that she depends on no one and serves her people. Next, the voiceover tells us about the real characters in the story. Under Queen Elizabeth, England entered an era of peace and prosperity.